Hello and welcome. Uh, we're going to give just a minute for people to jump on and we'll get we'll get going here. So we're, we're live on Facebook. If you're live on Facebook with us, uh, feel free to comment, like and share this video. Uh, and then we'll we'll be using the comment section there on Facebook as well as the Q&A function uh, for any questions that you may have uh, toward the end of our webinar today. So it looks like we've got 15 participants on the line. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so welcome to the Business as Unusual with the Mountain Association for Community and Economic Development, uh, also known as MACID. Uh, my name is Ryan Jones. I'm the Director of SOAR Innovation. Uh, as mentioned, just a, a couple housekeeping notes with Zoom. If you've not used Zoom before, uh, there's a chat function at the bottom that you can use if you want to submit uh, just a message to the group or if you want to send a message directly to a panelist you can use the chat function for that. Uh, we are going to be doing a Q&A at the end so we really encourage you to use the Q&A function at the bottom as well. Just simply click that and you can submit a question uh, directly to uh, Carrie for the end. Uh, there's also a raise your hand function on Zoom and you can click the raise your hand function and we can simply unmute you and allow you to ask a question live. Um, we're also on Facebook Live, so if you're on Facebook, hello, thanks for joining. Uh, comment below with any questions that you may have or comment. I uh, encourage you to like and share this video, and uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, my name is uh, Ryan Jones. I'm the director of SOAR Innovation. For those of you that don't know SOAR, we're a collective impact organization that believes that we can create a future here in Appalachia. Uh, we exist so that the blueprint plan for the future of Appalachia does not sit on a shelf. Uh, we're here to drive action, we're here to grow the network, and we're here to be the champion for you and your business. Uh, we have over 200 partners that believe in this work that are moving our seven pillars of the blueprint forward, uh, all with a common goal to make Appalachia, Kentucky a better place, and MACID is one of those organizations uh, that is one of our partners in this work. Uh, SOAR Innovation is a partnership with the Kentucky Cabinet for Economic Development. We wake up every single day thinking about you and your business and community and how we can help and provide more resources uh, to help your community grow and help your business grow. Uh, our team encourages businesses to leverage the digital economy to think about a market outside the region, uh, whether that be using e-commerce tools or other distribution strategies uh, to take you to the market uh, rather than relying on the market to come to you. Uh, there's a national, we say this a lot, there's a national market that is waiting to be tapped and you can access it from anywhere in the country, so why not in Eastern Kentucky? Uh, we represent 54 counties in Appalachia, Kentucky, and have a team of business and innovation champions spread throughout the region. Uh, we have one in London, one in Campton, uh, one in Ashland, one in Hazard, and one in Pikeville. Uh, they are there on in the field uh, to represent our organization and help your uh, business or community help them grow. Uh, a lot of us at SOAR are entrepreneurs as well. I'm an entrepreneur owning a coffee roastery. Uh, we understand what you're going through. Uh, we, we understand the stress that you're going through. Uh, we're here really to be a resource for you, uh, even if you just need somebody to chat with. Um, if you wanna to go to our website, you can go to soarinnovation.tech You'll see all of our team's information there, all of our emails, our cell phone numbers. Uh, if you wanna go there, you can email us directly and we'll, we'll make sure you're, you get connected with the right person. Uh, so let's dive into uh, our time with Carrie. Uh, Carrie has been in the role of the Energy Programs Coordinator with MACID. Uh, she's a Kentucky native. She received her master's degree in international public affairs from the University of Wisconsin at Madison. Uh, Carrie has worked for nonprofits in energy, policy, and social justice work, including over three years at MACID as a research and policy associate. She lives in Lexington with her husband and two boys, and she enjoys baking, hiking, reading, and talking too much about energy policy and utility reform. Um, and I just learned that most recently she moved back for, to Kentucky from London, which is really cool. Uh, so welcome back to Kentucky, Carrie. Um, so I thought before we get started, and Carrie, we talked about this a little bit uh, before everybody jumped on. Uh, let's do something fun uh, to kick us off, a little bit, a little icebreaker. This is something that we do at a lot of our co-starters gatherings, and it's a nine-week business accelerator that we facilitate 
uh, in six communities uh, throughout Eastern Kentucky a year. Uh, so I, we start every one of these off with highs and lows. So I thought today we would uh, do highs and lows, Carrie, of COVID-19 for you to get us going. I think my highs and my lows are the same. Uh, being at home with my two small children, uh, it's been wonderful to be, have, be able to spend um, so much time. I've got a three-year-old and a six-year-old um, just to spend so much time with them. But then it's a lot of time to spend with a yeah. three-year-old when you're stuck at your house. That's right. So I think I love my children and sometimes I wish they'd stop screaming at me. <laughs> so both highs and lows are my, my lovely children. Great. Well, thanks for sharing. I'm going to turn it over to you and let you dive into the Energy Savings Program. Okay. Thank well, you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. All right, let me share the screen here. Get it started. There we go. Hopefully this works. This is my first time doing screen sharing on Zoom as a presenter. So um, uh, thanks for the intro, Ryan. Like um, he said, I'm Carrie Ray. I'm the Energy Programs Coordinator for the Mountain Association for Community Economic Development, or Mason. Um, we have offices in Berea, in Paintsville, and in Hazard, uh, but I'm currently in Lexington working from home, like I'm sure many of you are. Uh, this is a really weird and scary time for everybody, and I know a lot of y'all are looking for ways to stretch your budgets to keep your doors open, uh, both figuratively and literally. Um, so today I'm gonna talk about some free and cheap ways that you can save on your energy bills right now. But first, uh, give you a little background about MACID. We've been working for over 40 years to create a just transition in Appalachia. We wanna create economies and communities that are locally based, community driven, built on regional talent, traditions and assets, and embody the vision of a bright future. We do this in uh, two key ways, our demonstration programs, uh, which include our enterprise development program. Many of you may be familiar with our small business finance and technical assistance uh, offerings, our energy programs, uh, which I will talk a lot more about, and our strategic initiatives, which are kind of our new uh, ideas that we're exploring to see what works and what doesn't work. Uh, we also have a big uh, narrative shifting and policy research component where we talk about, we have a communication strategy that talks, that wants to talk about Appalachia in a different way um, than most uh, folks outside the region um, talk about us. We know what Appalachia can do, we know what Appalachia is capable of, and we want everyone else to know that too. Um, we also do research in new and emerging sectors like healthcare, tourism, we have a, a how to Airbnb program that's been uh, pretty popular uh, before the pandemic and hopefully will be again after, um, and worker and cooperatives as well as, and as other things. Uh, we also look into other things that we think might be opportunities for the region. So our energy programs, we have um, two energy programs, our residential uh, program and our commercial program. Our residential program is primarily focused on Housemark Kentucky, which is an on-bill financing or, or pay-as-you-save program that we uh, operate with six of our, our rural electric co-op partners in the region. Um, our commercial program is called Energy Efficient Enterprises, or E3. Uh, we help businesses, nonprofits, local governments, and schools to save money on utility bills through billing analyses, energy audits, solar assessments, financing, and support for retrofits. We also have a really exciting uh, workforce development program called our new energy interns. It's a six month internship opportunity for folks in Appalachia to train for careers in the clean energy economy. Uh, some of our interns are now employed or will be employed um, by our placement partners, such as Housing Development Alliance in Hazard, Homes Inc. in Whitesburg, um, Redbird Mission uh, in Clay, Leslie County area. Um, and some others were trained by us here at Mason and are now operating as independent contractors, entrepreneurs in their own right, providing energy audit and retrofit services for residential and commercial customers. So when you work with E3, uh, the first thing that we do is a utility bill analysis to make sure you're only paying what you should. Excuse me. I'm getting over uh, strep throat, so I apologize if I need to take a lot of drinks of water. Um, and I will talk a lot more about ut utility bills, your electric bills, um, in a minute. Um, our walkthrough energy assessments are on hold right now because we're not doing any travel or field work due to the pandemic. 
Uh, but when we do do our audits, uh, we'll look at your lighting, your HVAC, water heating, insulation. Uh, we'll do a solar assessment, uh, look at your roof, um, if you're interested in that. Um, we can also look at waste heat recovery if you're a grocery store or pumps if you're a city pool. We've got a great team with a lot of expertise. So if you've got an energy question, uh, someone on our team could probably answer it or knows who to ask to. Um, so like I said, we're gonna talk a lot about electricity bills um, during this presentation. I'm focusing on electricity because those bills are the most complex and everybody pays an electricity bill. Um, but if you have gas um, and you're interested in working with us, we will, can and do look at gas bills as well. But it's probably no surprise to anybody that electricity rates have been going up. Um, KU has been asking for rate increases uh, about every two years and their small commercial rates have gone up 24% since 2014. And I know people remember the very large 2017 Kentucky power rate increase that impacted the region, especially um, commercial customers. Uh, the energy burden in Eastern Kentucky is among the highest in the country and energy burden, the energy, energy burden is the percentage of income that people pay um, on electricity as a share of their total income. Um, and it's some of the highest in the United States. So now we're going to talk a little more in depth about your electricity bill. Um, knowing what you're paying and why is the first step to taking control of your energy usage. And it's a way to find savings, um, often without spending a penny. Um, so there are five main components to an electricity bill. Um, a commercial electricity bill. I want to be clear, I'm talking about commercial bills right now um, because Energy Efficient Enterprises works with small businesses. So there's your usage charge, which is what everybody thinks about when you pay your bills. The amount of kilowatt hours that you use in a billing cycle, and that's what your rate is, 10 cents, 11 cents, 9 cents kilowatt hour. Your demand charge is a charge that some commercial customers pay, and it measures the rate at which you use energy, and it's measured in kilowatts. And we'll get it more into depth into this in a couple of slides because it's really important for commercial customers to understand. Then you've got your customer charge or your service charge or your you know, flat fee that everybody pays. Um, it covers infrastructure costs like power lines, substations. Um, there's taxes. There's a few different taxes on your bill. Everybody pays the 3% school tax. For profits pay 6% sales tax. And depending on where you live, you might also pay a franchise fee, uh, which is usually about two to 3%. Um, and it's from, uh, it's something that the investor owned utilities, which are KU and Kentucky Power in our region, uh, will, may, might charge. Um, basically, when an investor owned utility or IOU takes over as an electricity provider um, in a new town, they'll pay the town to use rights of way and other infrastructure, and then they pass that cost along to the ratepayer. So that's the franchise fee, if you've ever noticed that on your, on your bill. Um, if you are a nonprofit, check your taxes on your bill. We found many instances where nonprofits have been paying sales tax. Um, you don't should not be paying sales tax. Um, you could either, some some utilities will give a refund, um, some won't, but they'll take it off, and so you won't be paying that in the future. Um, and then we have our surcharges and fees. Uh, these there's a few that are for every utility, um, and then there's uh, some that are exclusive to different utilities. I'm going to go into those a little bit more in the next slide here. So you can see every utility. Uh, charges and a fuel adjustment charge and an environmental surcharge. The fuel adjustment charge surcharge is the difference from what the utility thought they would pay for wholesale electricity and then what they actually paid. It can show up as a charge or a credit and theoretically it should balance out to zero over the course of 12 months. The environmental surcharge covers the cost of complying with regulations that keep our air and water clean. It can also show up as a charge or a credit depending on the fuel sources that the utility used in that billing cycle. Some fuel sources are cleaner uh, than others. Uh, over the past six months, um, KU's environmental surcharge has ranged from 2.4% to 6.18%. Kentucky Powers has ranged from 6.5% to 10.7%. They also recently applied to the Public Service Commission to raise that environmental surcharge. So if you are a Kentucky Power customer, you may be paying more for that. I don't have that information for the co-ops, unfortunately. Um, I don't know that it's there, I, I'm not sure how high that is um, for them, but there are an, a, a bunch of rural electric co-ops, and so I didn't <laughs> look into every single, all the details for all of them. Um, so Kentucky Utilities also has a DSM charge. DSM stands for Demand Side Management. It's just basically a fancy name for energy efficiency measures. 
Uh, KAGU is the only utility in Eastern Kentucky that is still offering commercial rebates for things like LED lights, and this fee covers those. It's currently 0 0.00053 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, the RECCs or rural electric co-ops don't have any additional um, surcharges, but Kentucky Power, as you can see, and if you pay a Kentucky Power bill, you probably notice they have several more. Um, you have a federal tax credit, which is Kentucky Power passing along some of their corporate tax cuts to the ratepayers. It's 0 0.0016 cents a kilowatt hour. Kentucky Utilities also had this credit up until their uh, last rate increase uh, back in May, uh, last May, when they just incorporated that tax credit into their new rates. Um, you've got a, um, the economic development surcharge is a dollar a month. It funds projects in the Kentucky Power Service territory. The capacity charge covers the costs of an investment in purchasing power from a coal-fired power plant in Indiana. Turned out to be more expensive than they thought, so they're passing that cost on to you. Um, purchased power adjustment um, is a fee or a credit that covers um, transmission costs for power purchased from other utilities plants that may have varied from the cost estimated in the last rate adjustment. It's been really small over the past several months. Um, very small as a credit or a, um, a fee. The decommissioning rider is a big one. Um, that's covering the costs of shutting down the big Sandy power plant. Um, it's currently 7.29%, it's a big one. Overall, when we've done billing analyses for Kentucky power customers, we found that surcharges and fees are typically uh, 10 to 12% of the commercial customer's utility bill. So that's included in what you're paying for when you pay for your electricity. So I promised I'd talk more about demand charges. I know you all were on the edge of your seat to learn more. Um, so here it is. So demand is the rate at which you pull power through your meter. It's measured in 15 minute increments. You're charged for the most power you pull, for your, pull through your meter in 15 minutes during your billing cycle. Uh, I often describe it as filling up your sink with water. Uh, you fill up your sink with water. The total water in your sink at the end is the kilowatt hour usage. Uh, the speed at which it comes out of the tap is your kilowatt demand. So if you open your tap all the way and let the water gush and fill up the sink really quickly, you're going to have a high demand charge that, that month. Um, if you let it trickle, your demand is going to be lower. And it's important to understand demand because it can be a really large part of your bill and there's things you can do to reduce that demand right away. Each utility charges for demand differently. KU only charges for demand if you're on its power service rate class. You get on power service if your 12 month average demand is 50 kilowatts or over. So that's a, a larger facility. And you can see their demand charges are pretty high and they vary, there's a winter charge and a summer charge. Um, but they are not every, um, not everybody gets assessed for that demand charge. Um, their demand charges are high if you're on power service, but your usage rate is much lower. It's three cents a kilowatt hour. Kentucky Power meters all of their commercial customers for demand. Um, their small commercial or general service customers get the first 10 kilowatts for free, and then it's $6 a kilowatt after that. Um, their large general service customers are those who have an average demand of over 100 kilowatts. So really big facilities like detention centers and courthouses might be on large general service. Um, and they're charged $7.97 for kilowatt hour, or per kilowatt, I'm sorry. Um, Kentucky Power's demand charges went up uh, for small for general service over 200% with their last rate increase. So this really hit a lot of um, small businesses really hard with when their rate increase happened in 2017 and their rate restructuring happened in 2017. Uh, Co-ops vary from um, utility to utility on how they assess for demand, but typically it kicks in at 25 or 50 kilowatts and charges range, for, range from 422 at Cumberland Valley to 741 per kilowatt at Fleming Mason. So why is this important? Uh, your demand impacts your rate class and being on the wrong rate class can cost you. Once you're signed up for a rate class, utilities are not required to check back to make sure that things haven't changed and maybe you should be on a different rate class. Maybe you've installed LED lights or a new heat pump or maybe your facility's usage has changed and now you're eligible for a lower rate class or maybe your demand is right on the edge uh, of being bumped up to a more expensive rate class, but making a few changes uh, will get you on a lower rate class or keep you from being bumped up onto a more expensive one. Um, also, demand charges can be a really big part of your bill, especially if you're a, a facility like a church or a community center. 
um, that uses a lot of power on just a few days a week. So if you're a church and you have serve, you come in on Sunday and you turn everything on all at once, uh, you're going to pull a bunch of power at that time or on Wednesday evenings when you have Bible study. Uh, and that's that's going to cause really big demand spikes. We see demand be um, demand costs are often more than the kilowatt hour usage costs for churches and community centers sometimes. So it's a big deal and it can be very expensive. So what can you do about your demand? The first thing, get a free billing analysis from Mason. We will look at your bills for free. Um, we look at 12 months of your bills. Um, if you're on Kentucky Power or Kentucky Utilities, it's really easy for us to get access to your bills. Um, we're, the co-ops are a little more complicated, but we'll look at them for free. Um, even if you're not a rate class, on a rate class that's being charged for demand, we, we can still tell you a lot about your usage. If you're in danger of being bumped up to a higher rate class, we'll look for um, the sales tax that I mentioned. Um, we'll, we want to make sure that you're only paying what you should be. Um, and we can learn a lot about uh, other about other issues that might pop up uh, or be indicated by the way that you're that you use power from month to month. So get a free billing review from us. We're happy to do it. It doesn't take very long, um, and it's free. Um, another thing like I, I alluded to before: don't turn everything on at once. Remember, demand is measured by how much you pull in 15-minute increments. So if you come in in the morning, you crank up the AC, you turn on all the lights, you power up the coffee maker all the computers, your equipment, that's gonna jack up your demand. So space things out if you can. Um, one of the things we consistently recommend on our energy audit reports is programmable or Wi-Fi thermostats. HVAC equipment, especially heat pumps in the winter, really contribute to demand. A programmable thermostat can help keep things running more consistently, plus it reduces your kilowatt hour usage and keeps your facility more consistently comfortable. In the winter, if you have a heat pump, don't turn that thermostat up more than two degrees at a time. Raising the temperature more than that forces a heat pump into emergency or resistance heat, heat mode, which spikes your demand and can be three times more expensive. If you are a facility that sees your bills go way high in the winter, if you have a heat pump, you may this might be why you're seeing those, those big, big spikes. It's another reason to invest in programmable thermostats. So now I'm gonna show, take a, a look at some bills so we can see what we're talking about. KU bills are very straightforward. We've got your usage here. I hope you all can all see my cursor. Um, you can see the demand here is 65.6 kilowatts. And the charges are all laid out here. There's my cursor right here. Um, they're on a general service three phase, which means they're not, they're being metered for demand, but they're not being charged for demand. Now, uh, even though that they're not being charged for demand, even though that their demand is higher than that 50 kilowatt um, cutoff, or threshold, um, and that's either because they, excuse me, uh, their 12 month average is less than 50 kilowatts per month, or because this facility is old enough to have been grandfathered in under this general service um, charge, like they were, in, they were in operation before the power service uh, rate was developed. So they've been grandfathered in, so they're lucky if that's the case. And you can also see they've got a franchise fee for Moorhead. Head is one of those that pays the franchise fee. Now, Kentucky Bowers bills are a lot more confusing. Um, the, you see up here in the corner, you've got your usage, kilowatt hour usage, you've got your demand here. Um, uh, there's the, the rate, general service, but they combine the usage, the demand, and the base fee all together here in a line called rate billing. Um, so you can't really tell how much you're paying in your usage and your demand unless you do the math. Um, if you get a rebilling review for us from us, we'll do that math for you. And then you can see all the surcharges um, and the, you know all the surcharges that you pay. Co-op bills um, look different, a little different, um, but from from utility to utility. But they're general. Follow this general format. Um, you see you've got everything over here on the left hand side, you've got your kilowatt us usage, your demand, um, the reference here is your, um, is your rate and it says the rate underneath it, C2. Sometimes this doesn't always match, like it'll, the description under reference will not quite match the rate classes listed on their website. Um, so if you're confused, give us a call, I'll help you figure it out. And then over here you've got all of your charges. One thing, some utilities will include their customer charge 
in with their kilowatt hour charge. So if you're not seeing customer charge on your bill, it's probably because it's combined with the kilowatt hour charge. You can see here, one thing I didn't mention is there's some fixed charges. Um, secure, they pay for a security light. You might also see um, security light charges on your bill, no matter who your utility is, if you pay for those. One last thing I want to mention is contract demand. Now, you probably, if you signed up for this webinar, you probably saw that um, that big chunk of savings that Lee County saw that $20,000 savings that they saw uh, on their utility bills. And that came from contract demand. This isn't something that affects a lot of people, um, but I wanted to cover it because that's what say it, it can it can save you money. This is something that larger customers see, like the um, power service customers on KU. It's possible to see it through Kentucky Power and probably through the co-ops, but I'm not sure. I've never seen it on the co-ops. Um, so what what this is is. A utility needs to make sure that your meter and the related infrastructure is sized correctly to handle the maximum demand your facility might need. So they'll look, they'll look at the highest demand you had for the previous 12 months, set that as your contract capacity right here. It's 126 kilowatts for this facility. Now every month they'll take your meter demand and compare it uh, to this. You can, it'll either be 60% of contract capacity, 75.6, the highest previous 11 months, the highest demand in that previous 11 months, uh, oh, sorry, was 90, so 50% of that highest demand, 45, or the, the, act, the, the minimum or your actual demand is 50. So whichever one of these is the highest is what you're going to pay for, um, regardless of what your meter demand is. Now, in the case of this client, there were five months out of the year where the client was paying the 75 point, for the 75.6 kilowatts of contract capacity when their actual demand was closer to 45 kilowatts, which was costing them an extra $700 or so a month. Now, the thing with contract demand is once it's set, the utility doesn't go back and look at it again. Um, then this is what happened with the Lee County Courthouse. Uh, their contract demand was set, I believe, when a bunch of construction was happening, so it was much higher than what their normal usage was. Utilities are not required to let you know if you could be paying less. They'll definitely let you know if you should be paying more. So it's good to, if you see this uh, on your, this is, a, this is from a KU bill. If you see this on your bill, give us a call. The good thing about this is it's really easy to get it fixed. You just have to contact KU and get a new contract set. Um, we'll also check back every year to see if we can get it lowered again, which we just did with Lee County back in March. And now they are saving an additional $3,700 a year in savings. So uh, if you see this on your KU bill, um, or if you're on a large um, power service rate with uh, Kentucky Power, uh, give us a call and we'll just check to make sure that you're not in a situation like this where you're paying way more than you should be for your contract demand. Another reason why it's important to know what demand is. So as you can see, there are real savings to be had from billing reviews. Not every utility, there's 20, we found over the past, since 2017, sorry, um, we say found $21,000 in savings on sales taxes. Um, some of that is, is from a big lump refund and some of it is savings, we project you know, annual savings for the future. Um, not every, every utility will refund back sales tax paid. Um, Kentucky Power um, has been doing it and Cumberland Valley has been doing it. Um, Kentucky Utilities will not do it unless you can prove that you told them you were a, a, a nonprofit when you signed up. Um, but regardless, you're not gonna be paying it for the future at least. Uh, rate class changes has saved over $4,000 for our clients. Um, this is more relevant to KU and co-op customers, since really there's only one big rate class for small commercial customers for Kentucky Power. Uh, and billing reviews, uh, like I mentioned, we've got this, this large chunk of contract demand savings um, for, for a couple of our clients. Uh, billing reviews also find other ways to save. Um, for example, billing reviews at Redbird Mission in Clay and Lovely counties showed us that they can shut off this very expensive electric boiler they have every summer, which saves them $11,000 a year. They were paying $11,000 they didn't need to pay because they didn't disconnect this boiler. And it's a lot, you need to, it doesn't cost much to have the Kentucky Power come back and turn it back on. It costs a lot less than $11,000 a year. Uh, Methodist Mountain Mission in Barberville uh, contacted us with concerns about really high bills for a small retail store. 
Um, and an investigation by our team found that they're paying, they were paying to run this a big electric furnace that they didn't even need. Um, so they shut that off and now they're saving about $2,200 a year on that. Uh, St. Vincent Mission was paying for two meters when they could have combined it uh, into one meter and that saves them about $300 a year. So there's really a lot to be learned from your utility bill and a lot of savings that are possible, which is why I spent so much time talking about it. Also because I'm an energy nerd and I love talking about utility bills. So not everybody is going to see savings from a utility bill review. Um, you'll learn a lot, but you may not always see savings. Um, but an on-site energy audit is the way to find definite, find, definitely find ways to save. Um, I mentioned before, May said staff are not performing audits at the moment due to the pandemic, but depending on your location, um, we might be able to send out one of our trusted contractors to perform the audit on our behalf. So they'll give us the data and we'll send you the report. Um, otherwise, we can put you on a waiting list for when we're back in the field. Uh, typically, our audits are $75 an hour with a max per building max of $225. But we have currently have grant funds to provide free audits for for-profit businesses, uh, for-profit small businesses, and nonprofit child care centers, as long as they're not uh, home-based child care centers or home-based businesses. That's just a stipulation of the grant, unfortunately. Um, and we're really hopeful that really soon we're going to be have some funds to provide free audits for nonprofits in the near future as well. Um, so contact us, get on the list, and we'll uh, do what we can to help you out. Um, if you're interested in solar, we do free remote solar assessments. Um, uh, the interest in solar and and has been exploding in Eastern Kentucky. I mean, just in in Letcher County, there's. I mean, I bet I would imagine Letcher County probably has more solar capacity installed per capita than almost anywhere else just given the population and the amount of of solar that's been going up on their businesses and nonprofits there um, for-profit businesses are eligible for federal reap grants that cover 25 percent of the installed cost um, plus you get a 26 percent federal tax credit which really lowers the cost of uh of solar uh, in your on your business uh, NACID also has affordable financing for solar installs for those who qualify um, and that and it can be structured to put cash in your pocket from day one. Now changes in the state law are likely to make solar a lot less affordable in the near future. We don't know exactly when. So if you're interested in solar, now is the time to act so you can get put on uh, the current net metering one to one credit rate um, that currently exists and makes solar uh, pay off. When you get an audit or a solar assessment from us, you'll get an energy report. Uh, that details our findings plus we'll give you support to make any retrofits we don't do uh, retrofits ourselves so we're not trying to sell you on anything um, but we can connect you to trusted contractors we'll review bids um, we can connect you to mason financing um, we just are there to support you uh, to make these retrofits or uh, anything that you need to lower your utility bills um, also if you've been thinking about making energy efficient upgrades to your facility now is a good time if your building is closed or at reduced hours then the retrofit won't cause as much disruption to your business. Now, one thing we almost always recommend is upgrading to LED lighting. The cost has come down so much that retrofits typically pay for themselves in less than two years. Um, for clients with very old lighting, those really big uh, T12 lights that are like real thick, long tube fluorescent lights, they pay off in less than six months a lot of the time, depending on uh, how often they're in use. Now, if you're on Kentucky Utilities, there's an extra incentive because they have those commercial lighting rebates and we're happy to help you apply for those. There's some uh, requirements about the kind of lights that you purchase, so uh, just get in touch with us and we'll help guide you through that process. Now, there are some things that you can do yourself, of course. Uh, if you're really technically savvy and you've got a, an engineer um, or a really talented uh, hand, you know, uh, handy person on your staff, you might be able to install lights yourself. Typically, that's something that a contractor will do. Um, but there are some thing, other things that most anyone can do um, to save money around your facility. Um, air sealing around doors and windows can be done with a tube of caulk and some weather, weather stripping. Um, our residential expert, uh, energy experts on staff recommend using DAP can spray foam for larger gaps. Let's talk how great DAP can spray foam is when you have big gaps to fill. So write that down. Um, you can get caulk and, and weather stripping and air sealing supplies at your local hardware store, wear your mask when you go in, uh, or online. Um, 
programmable thermostats, like I mentioned before, great idea. The Wi-Fi versions are really great because you can adjust the temperature before you arrive at your facility from your computer or your phone. So it's already comfortable when you get there and also help you monitor um, the, the temperature and if when your uh, HVAC is kicking on and off. Um, but even a regular programmable thermostat will make a difference. You can get one at any hardware store, get them online. They're pretty easy to install. I've installed a programmable thermostat myself and I am really absolutely not an engineer. Um, if you're not sure the best schedule to set it to, just give us a call. We'll help you figure out uh, the best way to maximize your savings. Now, if you've not already done this, change out your incandescent bulbs and even your CFL bulbs to LEDs, if, especially if you're on KU. You can get up to a $5 rebate for each Energy Star certified screw-in LED bulb you buy. They're not, they don't cost $5, so you're going to get them for free. Um, and even without the, the rebates, it's a no-brainer. Replacing a 60-watt incandescent bulb that's on 40 hours a week with an LED pays for itself in three months. Replace those bulbs. Um, I talked earlier about not turning up your heat pump too much when you have uh, in the wintertime or, you know, in July in Kentucky, you never know what the weather's going to be. You might need your heat. I have my heat on earlier this week. Um, and changing your air filters on your HVAC system. It seems like such a small thing, but we've seen firsthand the difference it can make. A dirty filter can really impact your system's efficiency, so make sure you change those, those filters um, every few months. Here's an example of one of our clients who has saved in uh, a lot of ways. It's Methodist Mountain Mission in Jackson. They've got, uh, that's where their main office is. They've got a warehouse there and a store. And they've got stores uh, throughout the region. They're a great mission-based organization, really helping a lot of people uh, in Appalachia. Uh, an LED lighting upgrade at their office is saving um, them uh, $1,160 a year. That upgrade is gonna pay for itself in less than two years. They've got a rate class change, I think for their warehouse because they had already installed LEDs on their warehouse. It had lowered their demand enough that they were eligible to be on um, a cheaper rate class. So now they're saving almost $2,000 a year with that rate class change. And then they were paying sales tax um, on their, uh, at their store, which is on Kentucky Power, and they got a $980 sales tax refund. There's some other retrofits um, that are some examples of how other clients are saving. Uh, Leslie County Library uh, upgraded their lighting uh, saving $3,100 a year. Addiction Recovery Care, we worked with them um, a few years ago. They're saving about $6,700 a year by upgrading to Energy Star appliances and changing out their heat pump. Jack's IGA in Beattyville uh, upgraded their lighting, saving $10,000 a year. Homes Inc. in Whitesburg is one of our uh, solar clients, saving $6,400 a year with their solar panels. And Redbird Mission in Clay County, I mentioned them before. Um, actually, the kind of the, the, the they're big, they cover a couple, they go through a couple counties, I think Clay and Leslie. Um, they're saving $42,000 a year. Um, and all, this is a great example of how much you can save by learning about your electricity usage. Only about $14,000 or so of that $42,000 is from savings is from their lighting retrofit. The rest has come from looking at their bills, their usage, finding ways to save that boiler shutoff that I mentioned before. Um, they're a really large campus. They've got a ton of buildings. They provide amazing community services. They've only just scratched the surface of what they can save. They're in the process of doing even more lighting retrofits at some of their other buildings, and they're putting solar panels on the roof of their high school. Um, so they're a great organization. We're super excited um, to be partnering with them and helping them save that, save that much um, and more a year. And that's just a great example of what energy, good energy management can do. Uh, just to highlight some of the work that we've done over the last five years, uh, we've helped enterprises across Eastern Kentucky save 2.5 megawatts of electricity, uh, almost $400,000 saved on electricity bills a year. We've done 177 um, audits and solar assessments. We facilitated 102 efficiency retrofits and 28 solar installs. So um, we've got a lot of expertise on our team. We've got a great group of folks that, that are here to help you out. So if you're interested um, in what you've learned here, if you're interested in getting a free billing review or a solar assessment or any of the other services we've talked about, please get in touch with us. You can apply online. That's the first step we're going to ask you to do is to fill out an application at efficiencypays.org. This gives us an overview of your facility, um, what you're looking for as far as uh, energy services, 
doesn't obligate you to anything at all. We're a mission-based nonprofit. We're not in the business of trying to sell you on any particular technology or service. We just want to make you um, help you get the most information to make the best uh, energy choices for your budget and for your uh, for your facility. We just want you to help you save money on your bills. My contact information is there. That's my cell phone because I'm working from home. Um, please get in touch if you have any questions and I'm happy to take any questions now. Awesome. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, great information. Um, definitely a program to, to take advantage of if you are a, a business owner or a nonprofit, um, nonprofit organization, definitely get in touch with Mason and see how they can help saving money. I mean, sim simply as that. Um, so there's minor things that she talked about that you can do to save money. So if you want to get in contact with her, please do that at carry at mesa.org. We do have a couple questions here for you already, Carrie in the Q&A. Uh, first one is from Courtney Howell. Uh, she says, thank you for your time and passion. Carrie, a couple of questions. Can you email your PowerPoint presentation to us? Uh, we're going to post this video um, to everyone that participated today and we'll make sure that we include the PowerPoint along with that and then it will be up on our website at theresafuture.org as well and I'm sure that Mesa will post it on their site um, too. So yeah, answer to that one I can say is yes we will make sure to get that to you. Um, and then she says are there any resources and tips on how to raise awareness throughout a company concerning saving power? Um, you know, behavioral changes are really a big deal. Um, if you have uh, a staff that's constantly, you know, turning up the thermostat, um, one of the things that we do at our office um, in Berea is we have, it's simple, but we have just little notes um, uh, on our light switches um, that's like, this costs money. You are, when you change the thermostat, you're costing us money. I think talking, uh, when you put it in terms of dollars and cents. Um, I think people think about it more. Um, mm -hmm. But with some of these um, thermostats, I'm talking a lot about those because that tends to be a problem in offices. Um, you can actually, if they're, if, uh, they're the Wi-Fi ones, um, you can set it so that you can't change them. Some of them, I think you can even set it where people think they're changing it, like it looks like it's being changed, but it's not actually being changed. Um, so you can lock people out of thermostats. Um, but I think having a frank conversation with, um, with folks about what uh, the impact that it's having, like share, if you can be frank and share what your utility bill is and um, how much it's costing when you turn up that thermostat um, that many degrees, yeah, you might just put a sweater on. Uh, it's going to save you money and that, especially, you know, if you're a nonprofit, that's going to money that can be used to support your mission. If you're a, a for-profit, that's, that's going to go back into uh, the pockets of, of the people who work there, hopefully. Um, but I think just having frank discussions about, um, about that, I think could really help. And I would love to hear what other people, if, if other folks have, have been successful in convincing their employees to, um, be smart about energy usage. I think that would be a, a, a great thing to discuss. Yeah, gathering as a team and just kind of going over where you stand now and how how minor things can help can help you save. I think would be just a gathering with your team uh, and an open line of communication about it. Um, and Terry Sawyer, he says, "What did you have to do to become an energy energy auditor for Mesa?" Um, we the ones that we work with now are the folks that um, who have been our uh, former interns and are now kind of on their own. But I think if you wanted to, um, to contact us, we could talk about, uh, about that. So give me a call or an email um, and we can, we can discuss that. Sounds great. Uh, he also asked if there was any more information pertaining to Kentucky Power. Uh, I could talk a lot about Kentucky Power. Do you have a specific question? Terry, if you want to submit a, uh, some more specifics around Kentucky Power, maybe in the chat function, you can submit that directly to us uh, or put it in the Q&A and we, we can address it. Uh, and then Tal Jones, he's one of our champions out in London Corbin area. Um, are municipally owned utilities higher or lower as a rule, specifically in the Corbin area? I actually, I don't have that information off the top of my head, but we have, let me see if I can pull that up. 
um, I feel like some of the, like one of the highest uh, rates in the, um, in the region are, um, is like Olive Hill utilities. Um, Josh Bills is, I know on here somewhere, I don't know if I can see the chat function or not. Um, that might be something with, Josh, do you know um, how Corbin's utility rates compare to um, others' utility rates? And we can we can let Josh uh, we can unmute Josh if he okay. wants to say a few words. So let me click unmute here and see if he yeah. wants to share. Josh is our certified energy manager and knows more about energy than anyone I've ever met. Um, Josh, you should be unmuted so, now. Can y'all hear me? This is Josh. Hi. Yep. Yep. Uh, so yeah, Olive Hill, uh, they have wholesale power from, e uh, from Kentucky Power. Um, and so their retail rates as a municipal utility are generally higher than other utilities that in the past have gotten power from Kentucky utilities, which includes Corbin and Bree municipal utilities. So it can really vary by the municipal utility and it, and it does have a lot to do with uh, where their wholesale power is coming from. Uh, one of the realities today is that wholesale power is getting cheaper. Uh, and that in turn is uh, actually showing up as an advantage to our municipal utilities because uh, a number of them, those that have been uh, getting power from Kentucky utilities uh, have banded together uh, and are, are now um, getting power on wholesale markets um, with uh, short and some long-term contracts and and that's really helping out. So Corbin Powers uh, is pretty competitive as is Bria Municipal Utilities. Awesome, thank you Josh. Uh, let's see here, I think uh, Terry put some more detail. He was just talking about uh, more more information on bill analysis uh, with Kentucky Power is what he uh, was referencing to. Okay, so we have just like a, an internal spreadsheet that we use to do the billing analysis that breaks it down. So if you want a bill analysis um, for, for a Kentucky Power client, um, you're feel free to send send it our way and we can do that billing analysis. Uh, for you, but it's it's just kind of a little wonky internal spreadsheet that we use to do that analysis. Courtney Howell put just in the in the in the Q and A is more of a, a comment. Uh, she says, "Thank you all, honest and direct conversations concerning energy savings. If you can be anyone, be frankly, I like it." She says, "Thank you, Courtney." I don't see any other uh, questions on Facebook. Um, if there are any questions that you have, if you're watching on Facebook, just leave them in the comments. Um, if you're on Zoom and you have any more questions, please throw those in the Q&A. We'll wrap up in just a couple minutes. And I think Josh, uh, Josh Bill shared some uh, links in the chat function. Uh, Josh, I don't know if you want to talk to those a little bit um, about, I think it was more about the rebate programs at the bulb. So you're still unmuted if you want to speak to that a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a link to Kentucky Utilities, uh, as Carrie mentioned, that still does have uh, rebate incentives for energy efficiency improvements. Um, so there's a, a place there where you can get to find the specifics on those rebates. Um, uh, if you are looking for a, a deep energy audit evaluation that, that comes with the cost, one of the things that KU also still does is they'll uh, subsidize 25% of those costs for a, a deep evaluation energy audit. Uh, so long as, as you as a, as a commercial customer uh, do move forward with at least one rebate uh, project that, that applies for a rebate. Awesome. Um, okay, so Terry has another question. Do you have an energy management program available for clients? Are you talking about a, um, like a energy portfolio manager? Kind of, kind of thing like the, I think that's the Energy Star or EPA. 
And Terry, if you'd like us to unmute you, you can uh, you can ask ask Carrie directly. So let me. Uh, Have you got me? Yep. Yeah, we can hear Thanks. you. I, yep, we can hear you now. How you doing, Carrie? Um, Good. The, the, the reason for that question is I, I work with a, a state organization, KSPMA, and we deal with school districts and also local government. One of the things that we're presenting to them is an energy management program. What that means is it'll go into a client in particularly, and we will do the analysis all the way from bill collection, the analysis there, all the way through walkthroughs, audits, things of that nature. But more importantly is to sit down with that client and develop a program specifically for them and explain the, the terminology that's going to be used for them. I know a lot of times people can use a generic program, but one of the key things is, that I found out is, and, and you hit upon it too, is behavior and culture. Initially, there's no cost to that. It's a low hanging fruit type deal, and that can save you anywhere from 10 to 15 percent you know right off the bat uh, as far as one of the, the people talked about before awareness and what can we do that's where an energy management program put together you know for the company can really be of a benefit to them we don't have any anything comprehensive like that we will um when we meet with clients we'll talk to them about their particular facility and we in our report we outline the things that work uh, that we recommend doing but we don't have anything that's like uh, that sounds like a pretty detailed um, uh, program that y'all have. Um, we work with a lot of smaller places, a lot smaller than a, you know, a, a education campus. Um, but it sounds like a really interesting idea. I actually would like to talk to you a little bit more about your work with local governments, maybe offline. That'd be great. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate all the questions. Uh, so we have uh, another question here uh, pertaining to um, solar panels. Solar panels are really expensive as far as a long-term investment. Um, is it worth it? Well, a lot of that, uh, Josh, I know is going to have something. Actually, you know what? I'm going to let Josh take that away. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to let Josh, I don't want to give the uh, take opportunity for Josh to talk about solar. Yeah, I mean, uh, 10 years ago, it was not really a financial um, uh, beneficial move to make to invest in solar. Um, but we've seen a price reduction, particularly in the modules of about uh, fivefold in the last 10 years. So we're seeing simple paybacks for solar installations um, in the tune of 10 to 12 years. And that's not including any incentives. There, there still is a federal tax incentive of um, 26%. This year, it goes down to 21% of in 2021. And so if you include that, and then uh, USDA has some energy uh, funding support, and we've seen most uh, for-profit businesses that apply for that Rural Energy for America's program funding uh, for solar projects uh, get awarded, and that adds another 25%. So there you're looking at, uh, Right now, over 50% of the cost as a, as a subsidy. So if you include that, and then there's some tax advantages if you do some accelerated depreciation that, that can bring simple paybacks for solar investments today uh, down to four or five years. Um, and it's, it's, it's technology that doesn't have moving parts. There's very little maintenance. Uh, um, so nothing to, to really go wrong. Uh, the warranty on equipments uh, for the, a lot of the electrical equipments, 12 years and for solar modules themselves is 25 years. So uh, it's a pretty smart move to make. The, the concern right now is uh, we're looking at a potential in the, in the statutes that allow our, our regulatory body, the Public Service Commission to if a utility chooses to set a reduced compensation rate for somebody that has solar and is, and is sending that to their uh, distribution grid through their meter, uh, they might not get retail if, if utilities are able to um, 
get a reduced credit value. So that's what's potentially happening. But if you install today before your utility actually applies for reduced credit, you'll be grandfathered in one for one. So meaning any, anything you push out to the grid, you get a kilowatt hour credit and then you can use it at night. Um, so as long as it gets installed soon, there's a lot to, to show a really good financial return. So long as you have sun, you can put those panels in a place that have sun from at least 10 in the morning to two in the afternoon, um, most of the year, then you've, then you've likely got a good, good possibility of, of getting a good financial return from investment. The, the hurdle really is, is the capital takes up front. Um, so we do have a financing product. Mesa offers a, a 20 year 4% financing for solar projects for for profit. Enterprises, um, uh, which is really exciting. So that brings the opportunity to get savings from day one. Put uh, your solar up, you install it, and then once you're you're um, running up and running, your first month's electric bill is going to be saving more than the cost of that financing uh, uh, bill that you get in the mail. And I think just given the number of um, businesses and nonprofits who are installing solar in, you know, in, in Letcher County and in Boyd County and all over Appalachia, I think says something about how affordable it has gotten. I mean, there's this idea that solar is just for rich people, but, you know, Hemp Community Center is not a rich place and ISM IGA is a great uh, grocery store, but there's just, you know, the, the woman who runs it isn't, you know, a millionaire or anything. So, um, you know, I think Mm -hmm. are, are making smart financial decisions. Uh, they're not jumping on the bandwagon. They're really thinking about it and they're realizing that for them, this is the right choice to make. And if you're curious about it, we can do a desktop solar, solar analysis and of your facility and see if it might make sense for you. It's free. Awesome. And we, uh, we saw too, I don't know if you guys can speak to this a little bit, but just about some of the economic recovery loans that Mesa is now offering. Um, we, we just saw that posted on Mesa's website. If, if one of you all can speak a little bit about that and how that process works. Unfortunately, I cannot. <laughs> okay. Mission the past few days, so uh, being sick, so I, I'm a little behind on Mesa's news. Sounds um, good. Yeah, but I know that there are plenty of Mesa staff who would be thrilled to talk to you about it. Um, if you want to give, uh, and if you can, if there, there's not a contact, um, listing on the website, you can contact me and I will put you through to the right person. Awesome. Well, I don't see any more questions, um, uh, questions on the Q&A or on Facebook. So we'll wrap up here uh, right at noon. So uh, thank you all for being here, Josh. Thank you for contributing uh, toward the end here. A lot of good information. Contact Mesa if you're interested in this energy savings program. It's a great program. Uh, and uh, they'll do a complete assessment for you and make sure that they are taking care of you, making sure they can find ways for you to save money on electricity. So appreciate you all. Any last comments, Carrie or Josh? Nope, I just hope everyone's staying safe. And, uh, if you have any questions uh, about anything, just give us a call. We're happy to talk. Sounds great. Well, we appreciate you all. Thank you all for being on with us today and all the participants. Appreciate you being on. Uh, we'll get this posted up on our website at theirsafuture.org and then Mason will have it on theirs as well. So uh, with that, we'll just say everybody have a great day and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.